fascinating to me that throughout the Bible, God uses the imagery of wind to describe his spirit, to describe how his spirit works on the earth and how his spirit works in our lives. In fact, there are two words used in scripture that we normally translate spirit. It's the Hebrew word ruach and the Greek word pneuma, so Old Testament, New Testament. And both of these words, which means spirit, can also be translated wind or breath of air. All throughout scripture, the Bible uses this imagery of wind, this metaphor of wind to describe how God's spirit works on the earth and how God's spirit works in our lives. In fact, in John chapter three, Jesus is talking to a man named Nicodemus, a teacher of the law, and he's talking about how God's spirit is like the wind, and look at what he says. He says, the wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. Over and over again, the Bible refers or uses the illustration, the image of wind to refer to how God's spirit works in this world. And we get why, because wind is one of the few things in life that we understand as both tangible and non-physical at the same time. You can't really hold it, you can't really capture it, you can't really touch it, but you don't doubt its existence. You know it's there, you can feel it, and you can see its effects. You can see its influence and power all around you. I mean, how many of you guys have ever been almost knocked over by a gust of wind? Anybody ever been knocked over by a heavy wind almost? Yeah, we've all been there. Maybe you just felt a cool, gentle breeze one evening or one afternoon. None of us doubt the wind's existence. We can feel it. We know it's there. We see its power. We see its effects. But we really can't hold it, touch it, capture it. So if the spirit works like the wind, why does God use this illustration? Because I think this is used so that we can know how to relate to it. We can't touch it, we can't hold it, but we can let it empower us. Kind of like a sailboat. See, in a sailboat, if you position yourselves just right, if you raise yourselves and position it just right, the wind can drive you where you need to go. It can empower you, it can propel you where you can't go on your own. And I believe that's how we are to relate to God's spirit. We're supposed to catch the wind in order to allow for God to drive our lives, to motivate us, to inspire us, to propel us where we need to go. In other words, we need to go where God goes. We need to move as he moves. We need to say what he says and do what he wants us to do. In other words, how do we relate to his spirit? We need to catch the wind. We need to catch the wind and move as God moves so that we are in sync, in step with him.